Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combluzier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities, Inc. Today's webinar focuses on Kessel Run Resources Limited, which is currently uh, focused on exploration at a Turonium project located in northwestern Ontario, where it recently conducted a drill program consisting of 19,750 meters. The company has had success at numerous zones at the project, with the most recent results being from the Fisher Zone, where ongoing modeling has identified multiple high-grade zones. The company also owns the Bluff Point project on the same structural trend as New Gold's Rainy River Mine. Today, I have with me on the webinar Michael Thompson, who's the President, CEO, and Director at Kessel Run. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, Michael will provide an update on Kessel Run, including going over the results from its 2021 drill program and what it revealed about mineralization on the property, and then he'll go on on to discuss uh, what else is to come from exploration of the project. In the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live. So please submit your questions using the chat function and we'll get to as many as we can. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for Kessel Run Resources, there may be some forward-looking forward -looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Kessel Run corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Kessel Run specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Mike to update you on the company and what you have to look forward to. Thanks, Taylor. Welcome, everybody. There's those uh, forward-looking statements for everybody's quick perusal. Uh, so yeah, just a roundup of, of what we're doing here. Uh, you know, Kessel Run is uh, exploring for near-surface high-grade gold in Ontario. Uh, we're in an underexplored top tier jurisdiction in Canada. Uh, you know, Northwestern Ontario is a fantastic place to, to work, uh, hosts several multi-million ounce gold deposits. Uh, and as Taylor said, we've got two projects, the Heronian and the Bluff Point project. We're concentrating, uh, most of our efforts the last few years on, uh, Heronian and we'll continue to do so, uh, in 22. Um, Heronian it hosts a past producing gold mine. Uh, previous to us, had only really seen shallow uh, drilling, sort of in the 75 meter depth uh, uh, area, and also hosted hosts uh, an historic resource of just over uh, 500,000 ounces at, at around 14 grams per ton. Um, so we're fully funded and uh, uh, ready to uh, hit 22 hard. Um, there's a quick, uh, cap market, uh, profile, uh, KES on the venture exchange. Uh, we're trading around eight cents, give or take, um, about 94 million shares outstanding, uh, 118 fully diluted with, uh, options and warrants, uh, and, as said fully funded. So we're, we're, we're in, in the 5 million sort of range for cash and cash equivalents. Um, Institutional, uh, the share ownership institutions are, are just over 20%. Uh, management insiders, uh, just shy of 10%. I'm a big shareholder, have been uh, since inception and, and uh, continue to buy on the open market uh, when I'm uh, allowed. Um, the overview of the, uh, the management team and the directors. So uh, myself, I'm uh, president CEO and director, as, as Taylor said, uh, founding partner of uh, Flaggate Exploration Consulting uh, based at, here at a Thunder Bay where I'm based. Um, uh, I've got over 20 years experience and mostly gold deposits uh, with some base metal uh, experience as well. Uh, tech, Placer Dome, among others, uh, John DaCosta, who is the CFO, he's based in Vancouver, runs a, a management consulting uh, firm in, and has over 25 years experience in, in corporate management and, and uh, corporate compliance. 
Uh, Rodney Stevens is the VP Corporate Development. He just uh, joined uh, back in the summer of 21. Uh, he's a CFA, um, lots of capital market experience. Uh, you know, he's he's really going to help us out sort of on uh, the investor relations, the marketing, uh, that sort of end. Uh, really, really, uh, you know, fill, fills out the team quite nicely. Uh, Catlin Jeffs and Yana, uh, directors, um, rounding out the board of directors. Kat's uh, uh, president and CEO of Red Metal Resources, uh, a company that's uh, listed on the CSE down uh, looking at uh, projects in Chile. And uh, Yana is a chartered accountant uh, based out of Vancouver. So there's Northwestern Ontario. Uh, uh, for those of you familiar with uh, um, the area in general, sort of that uh, just north of that uh, figure would be sort of the Red Lake area. Um, for those of you familiar with Red Lake Camp. Um, so the southern part of Northwestern Ontario is really, in my opinion, uh, underexplored, undervalued by the market. Um, it hosts one uh, operating gold mine. That's a uh, Rainy River uh, mine operated by New Gold. Um, but, uh, you know, a few, uh, you know, multi-million ounce sort of, uh, advanced exploration development projects, um, you know, treasury metals up, up, uh, up here, up in near Sioux Lookout and, and, uh, first mining's Cameron gold project, uh, Agnico Eagles, Hammond Reef project down here. But so here's, here's Bluff Point. For, for those of you that, uh, uh, and I'll touch that on uh, uh, at the end of the presentation, but, um, you know, Thunder Bay over here and about an hour or so uh, west of town, just south of the Trans-Canada Highway is, is the Heronium Project right there. So just turn that off. Um, you know, great infrastructure, great uh, network of roads and, and uh, you know, natural gas pipeline, uh, uh, electrical grid. Uh, which is, you know, currently being upgraded, multi-billion dollar uh, upgrade projects that uh, the, the uh, 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 Ontario Hydro is uh, funding. And uh, yeah, as I said, you know, easy and good access, uh, great uh, mining culture. So there's a zoom in a bit of the, uh, the Heronian project area um, right next door to us in the, in the red pro uh, property boundary is, is a, uh, Gold Shore uh, Resources, um, and they have the, Mo it's called the Moss Lake Project. It's uh, hosts the Moss Lake Deposit, which is uh, just over uh, 3 million ounces at uh, just over a gram. Uh, it's an old West Dome project uh, that got spun out in uh, mid-2021 uh, into a new company called Gold Shore Resources. Um, so right next door to us, or right next door to them is, is us in the blue uh, property boundary. Um, there's the Heronian mine, that historic production, uh, and the, the historic resource in the zone sort of surrounding that mine. Uh, it's 100% owned. Um, it's about 4,600 hectares. It's a good size package. Um, that, uh, and as I said, that historic resource, uh, you know, 500,000 ish ounces at, at 14 grams plus. Um, done in 1998. So it is non-compliant. It is historic. And, and uh, you know, we're really just using it as a as an exploration guide. And that's all, you know, from the regulatory standpoint, that's all we can do. Uh, the, the mine itself produced about 30,000 ounces uh, back in the 1930s. So, you know, really good geology uh, on this this trend. And then and then we've got the southern uh, strike extent of the the Moss Lake geology, which I'll touch on in the next uh, slide uh, or the slide after. Uh, so just a quick history of the project. I get this question asked a lot. Of, um, so it was actually Northwestern Ontario's uh, first gold mine. It was discovered in 1871, uh, did not achieve commercial production until the 30s. You know, had to wait until the railway got put in and, and there was no rows. It was a, it was a real uh, a remote project uh, uh, per se, uh, as opposed to what it is now, which is is uh, actually quite uh, quite a, a good uh, project close to infrastructure. Uh, it saw intermittent work through the eighties and nineties. Uh, it was it was a uh, uh, the package as you see it now, or the property as you see it now was mostly it was made up of of smaller packages owned by 
uh, local prospectors and developers and a few uh, small juniors. Um, Pele Gold put the project together in 1996, and uh, that was just prior to the, uh, the Briex uh, uh, busting the gold market. And so they didn't really ever get any traction on the property, and, and it sort of got kicked around a bit through the 2000s. And then we acquired it in 2016. Um, we bought it for 4 million shares of Kessel Run uh, outright, 100%, uh, and granted um, a, a top up on some of the NSRs to, to Pele. So, um, you know, just to touch on the NSRs, no, none of the NSRs are greater than 2.5%. So that is the most, there's, there's some 2% as well, but uh, nothing over 2.5%. Uh, so after we acquired it in 2016, we, uh, you know, did a, quite a bit of data compilation, uh, mo modeling and targeting. You know, a lot of the data was was in, in quite a uh, bad shape. It was either paper and the digital, what was digital was fraught with errors and, and that. So we, you know, really cleaned it all up and, and truthed it. We, you know, we did a lot of ground truthing and, uh, you know, GPSing in, um, drill collars and, uh, um, you know, the, the old uh, workings and such. Um, and we came up with a new structural interpretation of the Fronian zone, um, you know, after doing quite a bit of mapping and trenching, and we did a little bit of geophysics as well, uh, discovered some new zones, uh, sort of in that area between, uh, some of the zones. So really, you know, we were quite happy with where we got and, and, and a new sort of look at the, at the entire, uh, property. And that was really our approach. We wanted to, to say, what did previous operators do right and what did they they miss uh let's make sure we're, we're looking at this with fresh eyes um so we drilled about 3,000 meters in 2020 just to sort of get the the ball rolling and then um just shy of uh 20, meters uh last year uh so our current exploration plans is we're going to continue to grow the uh the footprint of the zones that we've been drilling uh outline new zones uh, we're going to do a bit of geophysics, mostly uh, on some some strike extents of, of the known zones and uh, down in the uh, southern part of the project. So this figure uh, you know shows a, a little bit more detailed geology. Um, there's the the uh, proposed pit outline for uh, the Moss uh, gold deposit. Uh, based on on West Ohm's 2013 uh, PEA, and, and as you can see, it's hosted in the, what I call the, the the Moss Lake or the Moss Gold Trend, and it it runs down onto our property. We've done some trenching down there. We've, uh, we're going to do some more magnetics down there and get that drill ready, uh, and plan on on start testing some of these targets uh, uh, late spring or early summer. Um, the flexures we think are the key uh, features. You can even see it in the sort of the pit shape. There's a bit of a flexure there. Uh, we're fairly confident we found another flexure here and we think there's a, a one just at the bottom of the property there. Um, and again, you can see that flexure in, in the, the Huronian gold trend, which is where we've been concentrating all our work sort of in that mine area. Um, so there's a bit of details on the the historic resource, uh, you know, forty, just shy of 45,000 uh, ounces of gold at about 15 grams in the historic indicated category, and uh, just over 500,000 ounces at uh, about 14 and a half grams in the historic inferred category. Um, to note, those that resource, that historic resource, was is based on three zones that surround the, the, the Huronian zone that, the, that was historically mined. So the, so the actual zone that was mined back in the 30s is not part of that historic resource. Uh, they didn't even look at that uh, uh, back in 1998 when they did that. Um, and then uh, a little bit of details on the Moss Lake uh, gold deposit, about 1.4 million in uh, indicated uh, and 1.75 in inferred, uh, both at 1.1 grams. Um, so there is some, uh, a couple drill holes down in the Moss Southwest area, um, that we're going to start, uh, uh, following up on. So, so some good sniffs, I think, uh, of what is to be found, uh, uh, eventually, you know, 13 ish meters at, 
at just over a gram, 11 meters at, at one and a half grams or 1.4 grams. So fairly uh, uh, typical type of intercepts, what you'd see uh, at Moss Lake. So this slide is a, is a bit of a zoom in on the mine area. Um, so as I said, we've got uh, uh, multiple zones. So we've got the McKellar zone, the Fisher zone, and the Fisher North zone. Those three zones were, were what made up the uh, historic resource. Uh, so none of, of what was the Heronian zone uh, that was mined um, was part of that resource. So it, it was untouched and, and for the most part, you know, undrilled essentially. Um, the historic interpretation of the zone uh, or the project actually had the McKellar, the, the shear zone running like this and running up the Fisher North. Um, that was the, the, the previous to us, uh, uh, previous to Castle Run acquiring the project. That was the interpretation. Uh, so you know, doing the geophysics and doing the trenching and, and getting the data uh, in in uh, in accurate space essentially um, confirmed that that uh, that Heronian zone actually sort of trends up this way, and the uh, Fisher North zone is actually a, a sub parallel to the to the Heronian zone. And then you know, I'll touch on later. There's there's multiples of these type Heronian zones uh, that have been we've started uh, uh, outlining in through drilling and, and overburden trenching. Um, so we've been really focusing on the, the our efforts uh, somewhat on the Heronian zone. We've, we've drilled in the, the mine area uh, a little bit, but we've been concentrating on Fisher and McKellar for the most part, a little bit on Fisher North, a little bit on, on Heronian. Um, the bulk of that historic resource uh, was actually on the Fisher zone. I'd say about uh, two thirds of those ounces was on the Fisher, so um, and the surrounding area. So uh, yeah, so we're, that's where we're uh, been concentrating our efforts. So this is a shot of the Heronian zone um, back in the '30s. Uh, so this is sort of standing on on a, a ridge uh, overlooking the Shear zone uh, and looking to the uh, southeast, um, you can see there's there's the there's a shaft here, and there's a shaft here. So this on that previous figure that would be the sort of more more northerly shaft, and that's the middle shaft. Um, the picture on the left is is something that I a picture I took in in 2020 when we had an excavator on site doing some drill pad uh, preparation, some uh, drill trail uh, repairs. Um, Nobody had ever really seen the Heronian zone, as you can see in the in the picture. You know, all the waste rock sort of got dumped over the edge, and um, consequently, the surface expression of the of the mineralized zone was buried under all this waste rock. So we dug this this trench through the the waste rock. Uh, so that trench would be located sort of in this area here. So that that shaft is fenced off and it's actually just up here uh, in the background a little bit. So we got good eyes on the on the zone and, and uh, gained some valuable information uh, to help us better uh, target that zone. Um, so we've been, as I said, it's a dilational figure, uh, flexure, sorry. Um, and we've uh, uh, been testing the, the dip extents and the strike extents of the, of the uh, historically mined uh, uh, zone. Um, so we feel that there's quite a bit of uh, potential for, for remnant resources and historic mine workings. Um, there's a long section, uh, so that, that bigger shaft is, 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 uh, is this one, and that the middle one where, where we did, dug that little trench would be there. Um, so you can see uh, the gray areas are the, the stoped out or, or mined out areas. Um, and so the, the shear zone itself uh, is compromised of, of and I'm just going to go back, you know, the, the shear zone, you know, is, you know, at least 10 meters wide. It's it's 10 meters wide and, and made up of multiple uh, quartz veins. And, and so the old timers um, 
only mined out basically one of those veins. So, so even though there's multiple veins, they would just take it the, the best one that, uh, you know, typically, uh, but the, the quartz veins are sort of in, in the meter scale, uh, give or take, um, and quite high grade for the most part. And so, but they only took the, the best one because the cutoff grades are so high. Um, nonetheless, you know, uh, when we channel sampled across that shear zone, we found that there's the, not only the quartz veins are, are mineralized, but but the the host rock uh, is also weakly mineralized, and so we felt that there was quite a, a potential for some uh, remnant resource. So, uh, you know, drilling in and amongst the the workings here, um, you know, it, try to hit the areas in between the, the stopes um, was twofold. We we felt that uh, we could gain valuable information to better. Uh, target down dip or, or a long strike, uh, you know, try to figure out which way the, the mineralization was trending. You know, there was a question, you know, is it, is it plunging this way or, or is it a, is it a, a bunch of stacked uh, shoots? We, we feel that that's actually the case is, is it's, um, you know, there, there are, are stacked plunging uh, high grade shoots sort of si situated like this, uh, but they generally plunge down that way. Um, and then that was garnered. That information was garnered from the, you know, the information we got from the surface expression when we did the trenching, and then also, you know, with the modeling, and you know, we've got pretty good stope records. We've got uh, we're only missing one small stope. Um, I actually, I think it's actually this stope here. Uh, oops, keep forgetting. This stope here is the only one we're missing uh, records from, uh, but it's a small stope. Um, and then two, and twofold, uh, you know, drilling in and amongst the stoves, we get to outline that remnant mineralization and, and see, you know, is this a, a wide zone of, 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 you know, potentially economic grades. And I think, you know, we, we started proving that up as, as when we did manage to sneak holes in, in between the old workings, you know, we're getting pretty decent uh, numbers, you know, uh, four meters at, uh, at 16 grams and, and hole 54. Um, and then, yeah, quite, quite, quite good numbers, you know, 10, 10 and a half grams over two meters. So we proved the thesis that there, there's quite a, a large amount of, of mineralized uh, material left in and amongst the workings that, that could potentially uh, uh, be economic down the road. So, um, so yeah, we basically two, killed two birds with, with one stone, uh, testing two high uh, thesis. Uh, there's the the next slide shows the the fissures on. I like this shot from that we took from a a drone. Um, it sort of shows. Uh, I like it because it shows the fissure north zone, the fissure zone, and how uh, close proximity it is. And and there's the 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 drill in the center. And and, and uh, you know we've situated the uh, the drilling to to intersect. Um, these Heronian type structures that cross. So the fissure zone runs along here, and then you've got these Heronian type structures uh, running through here. Uh, there's a bigger one that runs through here uh, in this low area and uh, right at the, the, the crossroads of these, these drill trails. Uh, and that's one of these, these big uh, shoots uh, of mineralization. We, you know, and there's, but there's multiple sort of smaller ones all the way through. Um, So again, it's it's an intersection of a, uh, of the Fisher structure and a Heronian parallel structure, uh, stacked high grade shoots. Um, so there's the long section. Uh, so this that intersection that intersection on the drill trails would be sort of si situated right in here, and that's that shoot, you know, bigger shoot running down. But we feel there's you know there's multiple sort of uh, smaller shoots all the way through it. And again, uh, our gut is that it's it's you know generally trending this way, but you know how far down do these go is the is the question mark. Uh, so we we've, we've got the the fissure zone outlined to about 400 meters in strike length uh, and down to about 200 meters depth. Uh, we intercept uh, visible gold uh, in multiple times, um, but those uh, any, anybody saw the last news release last week? Uh, the big takeaway was. Um, our new interpretation of the area, these, these, uh, these Heronian, uh, type structures, 
uh, you know, these bigger ones that, that we feel uh, not only in the fissure zone where these, the, you know, these higher grade shoots are and that, but um, they mineralization actually stands quite a ways out. Uh, and so, you know, basically they, they're very similar to the fissure north zone in orientation and the Huronian zone as well. Um, so we think that's going to uh, have huge implications on, on the potential economics of the area. You know, these zones are all in close proximity. We think there's multiples of these. I think, you know, we think we've only touched uh, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Um, and we think, you know, there's potential that there's, there's going to be multiples of these all, the, you know, all through here um, as well. Uh, and so in part, it was outlined by uh, some historic work. There's some historic hits uh, that were unmodeled, you know, we didn't really know where they fit in, into the model, um, you know, this, this uh, 2009 hole down here, um, because through our trenching and through our, our, our structural work that we've done, there is a conjugate set to these, these the Huronian zone, there is a, uh, just off north, there's uh, a complementary set or a conjugate set to these and so you never know which when you hit intercept something and you get a hit down in here say you don't know where it fits in um so it's just basically a a, a numbers game and as we drill more you know when things start lining up and uh you know the geophysics does help somewhat but uh um anyways the, the long and short of it is uh you know we're we're super pumped and and and, and quite excited about uh of, about piecing all these together. And I think this is the big game changer in the area, these uh, zones and, and more zones to be discovered uh, all in close proximity. As you can see that scale bar down the left corner is a is, uh, hundred meters. And so th these are all very close together. And the, and the bonus is these, you know, you can drill these holes and uh, um, hit multiple zones uh, in one drill hole. Uh, some of these drill holes were actually, you know, we were targeting to, to drill down the depths of Heronian and we started hitting these things and starting to piece it together. And there's just some core pictures just to, so you can see some of the, the what the zone actually looks like uh, uh, for the, any geologists, uh, lots of albite, sericite, quartz, um, sheared up rock, you know, pretty highly altered, a uh, little bit of visible gold now and again. Um, so yeah, quite nice, nice rock to look at for sure. My, my gratuitous, uh, visible gold picture. This is, uh, McKellar, uh, again, showing sort of that to reemphasize that, that shear zone, you know, is, is easily 10 meters wide sort of in this area. And that's typical of these zones. They're, they're, you know, they're 10 ish meters wide, uh, you know, with these, these meter scale, uh, quartz veins. There's one down here, and I think there's one up here as well. Uh, all through the zone, um, and I like this shot because it, it shows that there's a drill collar from from the 90s. Uh, so when this was all covered in in overburden, uh, you know, we stripped it all off and and realized this. You know, if we were perplexed by this intercept that was right in the heart of the the zone, didn't have a very good intercept. Well, it's because they missed half of it. You know, they drilled right in the center of it and only caught half of it. Um, and again, this is, this is a shot actually not that far away from that drill hole. And there's some old channel samples, uh, and they're channel sampling, uh, you know, perpendicular to, to this, this vein set, which, you know, carries quite decent grades, you know, anywhere between one and seven grams. Uh, but it's these, these Heronian type veins. Now these are very small versions of it. It's just the, the best picture. Uh, so it's not indicative of the, of what these Heronian veins that, that we're targeting are, but uh, there's multiples of these smaller scale Heronian type veins through it. But these things, this is what carries the 30, 50, 100 gram material in these veins. And so we're targeting bigger uh, structures, bigger vein sets, um, or the structures where there's, or there's a, a high concentration of those smaller uh, uh, veins. Um, so yeah, so not effectively drilled by previous operators. We've got a new structural model. Uh, so yeah, so we're we're drilling in a little bit of a different orientation. We're sort of drilling like that. So we inter make sure we intercept these these higher grade uh, structures.
And there's a long section of McKellar, uh, you know, some quite fantastic hits, uh, uh, you know, 100 meters at, at 0.3, which is, is really showing the, the, the envelope of, of gold mineralization that the higher grade stuff is, is, is in. But, you know, you got 30 meters, of, sorry, 30 grams over 7 meters uh, right here in hole, in hole 78. Um, you know, some quite fantastic hits all over the place, seven, seven over, uh, close to six. Um, just, and so, uh, uh, you can see the mine workings there. Uh, so it's just off the sort of Southwest end of the, the mine workings, um, sort of the Southwest striking extent. So we are, have been, uh, working hard. We've got the, the mineralization extended to, uh, you know, 600 ish meters. We've got it down to, to 150 ish, um, and then we're, you know, we think there's kilometers of strike length on this little inset, uh, you know, where we're concentrating all our work in here. Um, we are marching southwest, uh, trying to piece it together. It is all overburden covered, so it's a it's a blind. Uh, so we did pop four holes in. We got some decent numbers, but uh, we're fairly confident this mineralization keeps trucking along on strike. And again, there's some gratuitous visible gold uh, shots and, and sort of gives you an idea what the what the zone uh, or at least the higher grade portion uh, typically looks like and their alteration. So, uh, you know, we've been pretty successful over 2021 and I, I believe we'll, we'll be uh, just as successful or, or if not uh, more successful uh, in 22, uh, extending all these zones. You know, the Fisher zone has a, has a great high grade uh, zone in it. Uh, that we continue to grow and extending down plunge. We're going to continue ex extending it along strike. Uh, and there's multiple zones that we've just uh, outlined in the Fisher zone area uh, that, that I feel will really change the potential economics down the road. Uh, McKellar zone, uh, you know, we, we again, uh, e extending that footprint, you know, extending it down plunge and along strike. Uh, and there's multiple kilometers still uh, of target uh, potential to the southwest. Uh, that we need to assess. Aronian zone, um, just to sum up that, that remnant resource potential, uh, we're going to work to upgrade that in the workings and, and continue extending the Heronian zone down plunge. And that's just a little overview of the sort of the all the zones and our, our, our concentration of areas. So as so we've completed 23,000 meters to the end of 21, uh, you know, multiple new mineralized zones uh, and zone extensions uh, have been identified um, and we're going to concentrate on ex uh, on you know finding more of these these zones in in the area and uh, and extending the the footprint of the known zones uh, as well as uh, as I said before you know start to to poke some holes down into the the moss uh, geology to the in the southern part of our uh, project area, and then just quickly, I'll go over the Bluff Point project. So the Bluff Point project, uh, in one of the earlier slides, uh, up in sort of in the center part of the project, uh, or the the region, uh, on strike from the Rainy River Gold Mine. So the 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 Rainy River Gold Mine situated down here. The structural zone runs up here, hits this granite and sort of horse tails through it. And uh, so this is actually the project that we we started the company on. It's 100% owned. It's just shy of 9,000 hectares. Um, you know, there's there's high grade targets, there's bulk tonnage targets. It's a, a porphyry type uh, or Archean Canadian type or Eastern Canadian type porphyry type deposit for lack of a better term. Um, and so, yeah, to use an example, if anybody's familiar with the, the Cote Lake uh, project that I am Gold and Sumitomo are uh, developing and, and uh, working to, towards production, uh, a lot of similarities in the geology and alteration and mineralization styles. Uh, so, you know, that and, and the Hammond Reef project, which is actually nearby, uh, owned by Ignico Eagle, that was the, the model for this project. Uh, um, so. Uh, we option a good chunk of it, staked a good chunk of it. And it's a, it's a real grassroots project, but it's it's a project that has you know a huge uh, a mineralizing footprint. We're, you know we're quite excited about the the long uh, term potential of it, but it is uh, a much earlier 
uh, stage project for sure. Um, but in, in a rising gold market, I think this is something that, that will catch the, uh, the market's attention for sure. Uh, just skip over that, but yeah, so to sum up, uh, Kesselrun, you know, multiple high grade bulk tonnage gold targets on, on 200 percent owned projects. Uh, both have seen, you know, realistically limited exploration and shallow drilling. Uh, even though we've drilled 23,000 meters on Heronian, we've really only scratched the surface. You know, we're, we're only really down 200 meters uh, at, at the most on, on some of the, the zones and, and less on in other places. Uh, you know, lots of drilling success. We're, we're continually intercepting high grade gold. Uh, we've got a great uh, team. I've got great geologists working uh, on, on the project and we're fully funded for 2022. And there is our contact info for anybody, you know, feel free to reach out at any time. There's my number, there's my email address and uh, happy to chat about the projects. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. So now we'll uh, turn to the Q and A portion of the webinar. Uh, just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type in your questions at uh, any point into the chat box. Um, we have had a number come in already. Um, first one we'll start with here is, um, does your structural modeling of the flexures indicate a Rydell shear system? I believe so. But you know, I, I used to call myself a structural geologist. Um, you know, the old saying that you, you, you get uh, 10 geologists on an outcrop, you'll get 20 different uh, interpretations. But yes, that is that is the, the consensus for the most part right now. Great, okay. Um, next question we have here, um, are there any environmental liabilities with the old workings? There is a small amount of tailings, um, but they are historic. So um, it's it's minor and it's, it's uh, I believe it's been, it's uh, taken on by the, the uh, crown. Okay. Um, and then uh, another one we've got here um, is the gold free milling um, past gold recoveries and do you plan any metallurgical testing? From the, the limited uh, records, yes, it is free milling gold. Um, so, and then metallurgical testing, there has been some historic metallurgical testing by previous operators. Uh, we are talking about a, a, a plan for metallurgical testing going forward, yes. So. Okay, great. Um, let me see here. Um, okay, so I guess looking forward uh, towards this year, you know, outlining that, that exploration, um, what uh, kind of timeline uh, is that looking at uh, for this year in terms of sequencing for, for all the work? Well, um, so w a recent news release, we, we were talking about a, a second rig. I mean, anybody familiar with the industry, rigs are hard to come by. Uh, so we've procured one. It, it should be arriving uh, soon. So um, yeah, so we're, we're going to bump up to two rigs. Um, you know, market conditions are, are tough, but, uh, you know, I think that's really going to improve the, the, the news flow and, and let us, uh, uh, hit these targets a little harder and, and start to move them forward in a, in a more palatable fashion, I guess is for lack of a better term. So, so yeah, I mean, we've got a good, a good budget, so, you know, we're, we're ready to hit it and hit it hard now. Okay, great. And is the the bulk of the drilling um, going to be kind of extending known zones and, and stepping out along those? Are you going to be testing any any new areas aside from the the kind of uh, Moss Lake extension? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, we'll be drilling the Moss Lake, but we're we're looking at uh, at walking up a little bit to the north, uh, sort of north northeast up up straight from Heronian. Uh, they're hypothetical targets now. We'll, we'll probably do a bit of mag to sort of flush those out. And we'll probably be popping a few holes into there. Uh, to the southwest, um, I'd like to, to march a little bit farther uh, and aggressively 
down to the southwest. Uh, there are Temiskaming sediments in, in, in the, the shear zone. Uh, bits and pieces of it, I think most of it's been eroded away, but they are, they are there. Um, and there's an interesting showing of much farther southwest uh, of the McKellar zone that has Temiskaming sediments mapped in it. And uh, so we're, we're quite uh, intrigued by that. And we'll probably uh, uh, put some holes into that. The bulk of it will be uh, nonetheless still uh, extending uh, zones and looking for new zones in cl close proximity to the Heronium. Okay, great. Um, so it looks like we are uh, running out of questions here. So I just wonder if you have any kind of final words for investors or, or final uh, kind of pitch that you want to leave us with. Well, I mean, you know, it's a it's a great project. I mean, I'm a big fan of of projects that are have good infrastructure or close proximity to infrastructure. That's my my, my tick mark. Um, you know, the old the old saying, my old saying, I guess, and I've told you this, Taylor, is uh, is I like to fly in helicopters, but I don't like to pay for helicopters. And I think that's you know goes through even the through, from exploration to to development and then eventually to production. So I like uh, uh, exploring in close proximity to, to infrastructure. Um, and it's, it's a great, uh, in my opinion, a great company to uh, invest in in a rising gold market. I think it gives you a lot of, uh, of exposure to, to a rising gold price. So fully funded. We're going to hit it hard. Good results. There you go. Perfect. Uh, so with that, I would like to uh, thank Mike from Kessel Run for taking the time today to host the webinar with Red Cloud Securities. Uh, and thank you to everybody on the line for tuning in with us.